Brace yourself for the feel-good technology story of the summer. You can now. This is real. I want to be, be very clear about this. This is not a parody. This is not satire. This is absolutely real. You can now run the PowerPC version of Windows NT 4.0, which looks fundamentally just like Windows 95, of Windows NT 4.0. You can run that with a full native PowerPC version of Microsoft Office on a Nintendo GameCube and an original iMac. <laughs> All of that is very real. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, I just published this article uh, <laughs> a little while ago. I'm going to read it to you now. Oh, because it's just plain wonderful. Um, there are two things that bring me an unreasonable amount of joy. Number one, the discovery of long-lost software. And number two, running software on hardware that it was never intended to run on. And this story has both. I am positively giddy about it. All right, let's talk about Microsoft Office for PowerPC. It is a well-known fact that Windows NT was developed and in some cases released for multiple CPU architectures beyond the common x86. Uh, of course, you could run it on a 486 or a Pentium class CPU, but there were also versions for MIPS, uh, DEC Alpha, and I, apparently in the article I wrote DEC Alpha uh, because uh, apparently I can't find the letter H, DEC Alpha and PowerPC. In addition to Windows NT, Microsoft also developed and released versions of Office, including Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, for those hardware platforms. Because it's not much good having an operating system for a particularly cool CPU if you don't have some software to run on it, right? you got to have Office. If, if you're going to release Windows, you might as well release Office for that platform, so you got some stuff to do. Um, now, we've had public archives of Microsoft Office office for both MIPS and Alpha CPUs. Hey I, hey, I spelled Alpha correctly there. Apparently, I learned how to find the letter H again for quite some time. But the PowerPC version of Office has, for whatever reason, remained elusive until this week when a gentleman named Antony uh, Sawicki got his hands on the long lost Office for power pc oh here here's a picture he supplied of the box I, I if you go check out the article which i will link to wherever you're getting this show uh i also have a link to his blog post where he provides these pictures and it's glorious yeah great job uh it says right there contains three and a half inch high density discs for x86 or higher processor a cd rom disc for 486 or higher Digital Alpha AXP, which is what the DEC Alpha CPUs were referred to at that point, MIPS, and PowerPC processors. Promotional sample, not for resale. And it's Office Standard with Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. Now, uh, Antony was alerted uh, by a, a friend to an eBay listing of a boxed copy of Microsoft Office 6.0, a box which intriguingly listed all four of the released Windows NT CPU architectures. And, and again, up until now, for some horrible reason, the PowerPC version just hasn't been around. People remember having it. <laughs> I, I remember seeing it when I worked in Microsoft uh, on various versions of Windows NT. I remember seeing uh, the ISO internally on our file service for the PowerPC version of Office. Uh, but apparently in the wild, people just haven't been able to find this gosh darn thing. So as Antony said, quote, since it clearly said PowerPC on the box, I got it. And here it is. And he provides a screenshot of Microsoft Word native running on PowerPC. You can see the, uh, the, the little Windows system properties showing the computer, the PowerPC 604 class processor uh, with 32 megs of RAM. Man, that's crazy, right? They run a full operating system in Office Suite and 32 megs of RAM. Crazy. Um, and he has a little hello, PowerPC NT, with, uh, with all the appropriate about boxes up so for verification. And, I, and I, if you're watching the video, check out this screenshot. 
check that out, man. Check that out. He's even got a screenshot of the uh, of the ISO mounted with Alpha i386 MIPS and PowerPC folders sitting right there. That is Windows NT on a PowerPC 604 processor with 32 megs of RAM running native Microsoft Word 6.0 for PowerPC. Awesome. He's also put the archive up so you can go grab the ISO yourself right now uh it's hosted over at virtuallyfun.com and uh hopefully a few other places hopefully it's up on archive.org and elsewhere already uh <clears throat> yeah uh, if you go 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 get that darn thing uh this is a major win this is a huge win for computer history preservation whether you like microsoft or dislike microsoft the fact that microsoft made windows nt for power pc but no one's been able to find the version of office that they made and released is crazy so from a, a computer history perspective this is a massive win massive massive win i love this stuff now buckle up buttercup because it gets weirder and way way more awesome let's talk about windows nt for the wii and the power mac <laughs> okay all right so the archiving of historical software is without question important right but being able to actually run that software on easily obtainable hardware new or old allows people to experience that part of computer history firsthand right there's nothing better than getting your hands on it clicking the icons yourself typing into the keyboard seeing it work at a at a speed and in a way that was reminiscent of of really how it worked back when it was developed and released i mean it's it nothing takes the place of that experience and thanks to one developer you can run windows nt both uh, versions 3.5.1 and version 4.0 on the Nintendo GameCube, the Nintendo Wii, and the Nintendo Wii U. That is not a joke. That is real. It works. Those are PowerPC machines, as well as several PowerPC Macintoshes, including the original slot loading or tray loading iMac, and the original uh, G3 iBook and uh, the blue and white G3 Power Mac and a bunch of other PowerPC Macintoshes. Like if you go check out the links and I, I link it all in this article, there are a ton listed. But that means that you can run the window, the PowerPC version of Windows NT on the clamshell bondi blue g3 ibook the one that kind of looks like a toilet seat with a blue handle you can put windows nt on there running at a glorious 800 by 600 resolution holy heavens man holy heavens man and it, it, oh, i just oh this isn't native this is this isn't emulated. This is native. This is real. This is bare metal, not emulated, not in a VM, not in a hypervisor. This is this is really running raw. In theory, it should be possible to run the PowerPC native version of Office 6.0 on every machine I just mentioned as well. Uh, obviously, it's only only been tested, shown here in the screenshots, uh, running on one 604-based uh, PowerPC machine, which I assume is one of those Macintoshes, but I'm not 100% certain. Um, but, uh, but it should work on all of them. This is something I am going to need to do for myself very, very, very soon. I'm going to go have to to pull some of my uh, PowerPC Macintoshes out of storage or just get a new one and uh, install Windows NT and Microsoft Office PowerPC on that because... How cool would it be to show up to like a coffee shop with a with a really old like Apple iBook, open it up and boom, it's Windows NT and Microsoft Office 6. Not emulated, but real. That's so cool. That's cool. I'm sorry, but that's cool. Now, a lot of you may be asking, why, why on God's green earth would I install Windows NT and Office on a Nintendo Wii? Why would you do that? 
And there are many valid reasons for undertaking such an endeavor. Uh, and most noteworthy, I believe, is the uh, whole experiencing computer history firsthand thing that we talked about. Nothing really beats that. And if you can use a GameCube or, or a Nintendo Wii U to experience this, this, this uh, seldom used part of computer history from the mid-1990s, why not, right? But there is one purpose for running Microsoft Word on a GameCube that eclipses all other purposes. Because we can. Oh my heavens. The, the joy that this brings me is immeasurable. I want to go look at that box again. Oh, look at that box. Is that shrink wrapped? I see a lot of plastic on there. I see a lot of plastic. I wonder if this was not opened when, when he got it. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Promotional sample, not for resale. Microsoft now for Windows NT. I remember those logos. Holy heavens. This particular story, I mean, it doesn't just scratch the, the history itch and the uh, I installed this random thing on this other random piece of hardware that was never supposed to run it itch because that's a big itch. And I love that thing. I love that so much. Um, but there's also a lot of nostalgia here for me. Uh, when I when I graduated uh, high school, basically, and uh, and started working in the in the computer industry. Actually, I, I graduated high school and went to work uh, in the computer industry. And then I'm like, I'm going to go to college. And then I went to college for a little bit and then promptly dropped out and went to work at Microsoft. That's my, that was my path. And uh, when I was working at Microsoft, my, my very first job at Microsoft was, uh, was involving Windows NT. And this was Windows NT version five. Uh, which eventually got renamed into Windows 2000. But when it was still called NT5 is when, when I started working on it. And uh, I, I had the, the, the joy of being able to work with the, some of the DEC Alpha machines. Um, I got to work with a few MIPS machines. I got to work with the DEC Alpha machines. But I never got to use myself the power pc machines the power pc development boxes that that we had uh that was just not something that was part of my responsibility so i never i never got one of those pieces of hardware i saw that hardware i saw other people using the power pc hardware to install the nightly builds of nt5 but i was putting those nightly builds mostly on the deck alpha machines and uh it's it's cool to be able to kind of think about all this again again and and my my time working on nt5 came after what we're seeing here because what we're talking about here is windows nt351 and windows nt4.0 um which obviously comes before windows nt5.0 and by the time nt5.0 came around um uh, things were things were changing in the processor uh architecture lineup that certainly changed when it came time for the windows 2000 release but early on in the nt5 development there was still a lot of of multiple cpu uh, architectures being supported and, and worked on and i got the chance to spend a lot of time on the deck alpha machines and that was which is really where a lot of the focus was uh, outside of x86. And that was just so much fun. And uh, seeing that here is pretty cool. I also worked on Microsoft Office <laughs> later. So this this is just a whole giant pile of nostalgia for me. Um, the version of Office I worked on was not for Windows, though. I worked on Microsoft Office for Macintosh. I, I, worked, for, I worked on a lot of bizarre platforms at Microsoft. I worked on... Things like NT5 for DEC Alpha processors. I worked on Windows Media for uh, Solaris, HPUX. Yeah, that, that exists, by the way. Uh, Internet Explorer and Windows Media Player exist for HPUX and Solaris. Um, so you want, you want raw, real Unix Microsoft software? That's a real thing that exists. And I, I had the 
I had the privilege to get to work on some of that. Um, this was, it was so much fun. Uh, as well as, uh, yeah, Windows Media Player for Macintosh. And that that's pre-OS 10 stuff. That's back in the OS 8 and OS 9 and, and OS uh, and System 761 and all those sorts of thing days. And then I worked on Microsoft Office for Mac, and that's both classic Mac and Mac OS X. And so I got to do both as Mac OS X was in development before before the release of Mac OS X Server 1.0, before the release of the first full-fledged Aqua Mac OS X uh, 1.0 betas, uh, all the or 10.0 betas, the, those all that stuff. I got to work on all that stuff, and it was a ton of fun. But I never got to work on the PowerPC Windows Word. I got to work on the PowerPC Mac Word. And anyway, this is cool for me. This is this is this is really close to the stuff I got to play with and I got to build and I got to work on and uh, yet yet somehow stuff that was always out of my reach. So it's very, very cool for me. Uh, this is very, very incredible. Uh, what, what was his name again? Uh, kudos to uh, ba -ba -da -ba -ba -ba, Anthony Sawicki. Anthony Sawicki. Great, great job, man. Uh, thank you to the London Journal subscribers for allowing me to reminisce about this and to geek out about this a, a fair bit. Lunduke.com. Clicky, clicky, clicky. Um, if you haven't yet uh, grabbed uh, uh, an upgraded uh, full-on subscription like the yearly or lifetime at 50% off, uh, go to lunduke.com and click on the 50% off link and then you can uh, 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 see basically all the different ways you can get uh, subscriptions really super cheap. Uh, and you know what? That's a win-win for everybody. Uh, the the more people that can get full-on subscriptions to Lunduke Journal at whatever price, even if it's just for $2 and a quarter per month, which is what the, the yearly subscription is right now. It's $2.25 a month, right? Even if it's that cheap, that crazy cheap. I, I mean, that's so cheap that if you really work it out per show... And per article over the course of the month, we're talking about, I don't know what, like five cents, 10 cents, something like that. It's crazy, crazy cheap. But even at that cheap, cheap level, it's it just, it, it's great. You help keep the Lunduke Journal rolling. You help keep the Lunduke Journal ad free and big tech free and able to just continue to cover whatever it is that the Lunduke Journal wants to cover. You can, we can cover the really nerdy things like <laughs> Microsoft Office for PowerPC is found. I mean, that's a, that's a very fun story. That's, that's something that brings joy back into the world of computing, you know? But we can also cover the really serious stuff, right? All the whistleblowers and the the leaked documents coming out of these big tech companies and the and the crazy DEI politics of these companies and everything in between. And we get to do that. The London Journal gets to do that because of every single subscriber, big and small, lifetime, yearly, monthly, one-time donations, whatever, on any platform. It really does. It really does help tremendously. And uh, I, I, uh, I can't thank you all enough for making this possible. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, nerds, and uh, by the way, if anyone out there. <laughs> out there actually goes out and installs Windows NT and Microsoft Office on a GameCube or an old Power Macintosh, send me a picture or a screenshot or something of that sucker. I want to see it, man, because that's something I want to do myself in the coming days and let me live vicariously through you. Uh, again, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, nerds and nerdettes across the inner tubes, I do declare end broadcast.